Welcome back. You are listening to Nate the Hate on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell on the upper right-hand corner so that you are notified each time we have a brand new episode go live on YouTube. And I'd like to welcome my co-host, Modern Vintage Gamer, who is recently back from the Game Developer Conference. Nate, it's great to be here. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me on. It's great to be back. We've we've been absent for. Uh... Six weeks, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, six, six to seven weeks. But we are back, and uh, we'll we'll uh, definitely be resuming um, regular coverage. So for those people that missed us, we're back. And uh, yeah, GDC was was a, was a good good convention. It was. Um, I want to say uh, it was not anywhere near at capacity as far as number of people that had attended. But that was to be expected, I would say. Um, you know, the uh, the first year back as a in person convention after the last couple of years. But you know, um, hopefully, uh, bigger and better next year and and beyond. But uh, it was good to be back and 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 meet people and 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 get to see some cool stuff. And yeah, it was uh, it was it was fun. Hopefully, a sign of things to come in twenty twenty two. And beyond as more social engagements and opportunities arise for people. And today's episode is dedicated to the Zelda Sensei and Shamsa, both of whom have generously donated $100 to support the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have a Streamlabs link in the description below. Donate any dollar amount, ask a question, we will answer it at the end of the episode. Donate $100 or more, and we will dedicate the episode to you. And once again, today's episode is dedicated to the Zelda Sensei and Shamsa. So today's episode, we're going to talk about the recent news of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 getting delayed. And originally, we were also going to pair this with Sony giving official details to PlayStation Spartacus, or now known as PlayStation Premium. But since we have been gone for a few long weeks, we are going to stretch our legs a bit here because we are suffering from some muscle atrophy and this is our physical <laughs> rehab session so we're going to get back into physical condition to get ourselves back up to speed and we will address that topic in the near future as sony still has some additional details on that platform still to come out but the zelda delay is big in its own right and that is something we are going to address right now so earlier this week nintendo went to twitter to officially announce that the Breath of the Wild 2 will not make 2022 and instead will release in spring of 2023. Are you shocked by this, MVG? Nate, I am not. And uh, <laughs> if you recall, the last three, four, five episodes, I did say that I felt very strongly that Zelda would not make it this year. And uh, here we are, you know. And... Uh, you know, before I kind of take my victory lap, I guess, um, <laughs> I think the reason why I felt like I didn't think it was going to come out this year, it doesn't have to do with whatever else Nintendo is working on. Because uh, there was some talk about how this year was stacked and they and they potentially moved it out of this year, you know, to make mm -hmm. room for everything else. I don't, I don't put any stock into that. I think the delay was purely because the game is still not ready. And, you know, that's that's the bottom line. And the reason why I felt like I felt strongly that the game wouldn't come out this year, not because the messaging at E3 last year said, you know, we're aiming for a 2022 release, even though that is very vague and it does leave the door open for you to push the game, which is what they did. I just felt like when, what they showed us last year at E3 was a very nicely curated trailer, but it didn't really show us much. And that's fine because it's Zelda. We, you definitely don't want to give away too much. Mm -hmm. But I also felt like I didn't feel like the game was. I feel like the, they should have shown us more of this game. If it was truly closer to completion for a 2022 release, I wanted more from, from what they showed us last year. And I think I kind of left watching that trailer feeling like, oh, this game is probably a little further away than 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 what they're letting us on. And that was kind of when I made my mind up that I felt like it just needed a little bit more time. And so th that's why I've always felt like it was a 2023 uh, release when that's that's what they've done. But 
My, my, I guess my question back to you, Nate, is, is it truly a delay if the game was never dated in the first place other than a vague 2022 <laughs> maybe date? I mean, I guess it is delayed in the literal sense because they did give it that 2022 slot. Yeah. They didn't give us an exact, you know, month or day, but they did give us that year, which they have now since pushed. So it is delayed in that sense. And this is just commonplace when it comes to Zelda titles. We, yeah, you look back to Breath of the Wild one. This was a game that was delayed numerous times on several occasions. It was in 2015. The game was delayed. And then we heard again in like 2016, the game just kept getting pushed further and further back. And that's commonplace for Zelda. Yeah. It never hits the original date. It's always delayed to some capacity. So Breath of the Wild 2 is just following that trend. It's following in the footsteps of its predecessor. So when I saw the tweet, I really wasn't surprised that it was delayed to 2023. As you mentioned, this is something we both kind of discussed back in January when we were talking about you know predictions for 2022 with Nintendo and Breath of the Wild release. It always had that possibility of maybe Nintendo finally sticks the landing to the game. But 2023 always made more sense, especially mm -hmm. spring 2023, as Nintendo has now dated it, made more sense for this title. And as you mentioned, when we saw the game at last E3, we got a very short trailer yeah. that was insignificant. It showed some of the new in-game mechanics and how Link utilizes his corrupted hand in some ways. But we didn't find anything new about the narrative of the game. It was just a very brief glimpse as to what the game may be offering. And then the Game Awards came around and the title was absent, something that we had both anticipated would be the case, that it would not have a showing at the Game Awards. Then we had the first Direct of 2022. And when we were making our predictions for that show, we were both in agreement. Breath of the Wild 2 will not be there. And it wasn't. A month later, we learn it's delayed. Yeah. When you look at all of that in a you know chronological order, I don't think the delay really should come as a shock to anybody. Right. And I've seen some people have the take, especially back in February when Nintendo officially announced Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for a holiday 2022 release. A lot of people saw that as an indication that Breath of the Wild 2 would be delayed. Now, the two have no relation. Pokemon release when they release due to external merchandise, the anime, all of those other factors. So when Nintendo slapped 2022 on Zelda back at E3 last year, they already knew Pokemon was penciled in for a holiday 2022 release. This wasn't something that they looked to as a quick emergency slot of a product. They knew it was going to happen. At that time, Nintendo must have had some reasonable confidence that Zelda could make it. And even if we do entertain that maybe Nintendo in the back of their mind was saying, we might have to delay Zelda, we're still only looking at a delay of approximately, what, six months. It's not a grand long-term delay. It's even potentially less than six months, depending on how Nintendo is using the term spring. Now, if we take it as the literal sense of spring, that would mean the end of March mm -hmm. all the way to June. Well, that's a year away from now, though, if you think of it that way, right? So they're having one more yes. year. That's kind of how I'm thinking about it. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's it's a delay. The delay itself isn't doesn't seem that significant. But another way to think about it is there's, there's still a year to go before this game comes out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another nine to ten months of development time. Yep. And that is substantial. That's a lot of work. Which definitely would make you wonder, why did Nintendo even have confidence to slap a 2022 release date on it last summer? Yep. Well, like Pokemon was not an indication that this delay was imminent. The two have no relation. They are separate entities altogether because one was definitely happening regardless of the other. And Nintendo definitely could have had both games out this holiday if the stars had aligned. They didn't. But... When you look at the Breath of the Wild 2 delay, you already see the headlines, you've already seen the rumors, you've seen the speculation. Because way back at E3, there was the speculation that Nintendo will launch 
hardware with Breath of the Wild 2 like we saw at Breath of the Wild 1. Do you think this delay is to take advantage of the introduction of new hardware potentially releasing in early 2023? I don't think it's to take advantage of, but you also can't rule it out, right? That possibility that there could be hardware that comes side by side with Breath of the Wild 2. But I don't think they're intentionally delaying the game for that reason, I would say. I think the delay, again, is purely because they need more time for the game to finish its development and get polished up to a quality that we've come to expect from a Zelda game. And honestly, it has big shoes to fill. Breath of the Wild is considered one of the best games ever made. That, That magic and aura that you got when you first played Breath of the Wild Will that, will that be replicated in this? It's hard to say. And I feel like Nintendo's really trying hard to make something special for this. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that it's, it's, you know, it's being positioned with new hardware, but I also will say that there's a, probably a chance that there's going to be some hardware that comes out with Breath of the Wild too, right? So, I mean, you know, it seems like, that could be the case. And Nintendo, you know, put their marketing hats on and they say, well, we've got got new hardware and we've got Breath of the Wild 2. Let's just repeat what we did, you know, with the launch of the Switch and do it all over again. It worked the first time around. Why wouldn't we do it again? So I could definitely see that happening. But, I, you know, I, I also feel like aonuma san and his team, they're just, they've got their heads down. They're working on this stuff. They're not really too concerned about the hardware side at this time. What do you think? Right. Yeah, I wouldn't link the two together. Link? Pun not intended. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we have seen it in the past. The Switch Lite came with Link's Awakening. True. It did. The new 3DS came with Majora's Mask. Yep. There is a precedent there, right? You're right. Yeah, there is a precedent. I don't think necessarily that that is what we're seeing here. I do believe that is just a case of this is a title that was hammered with internal problems first introduced in 2020 with COVID. Mm -hmm. And we know Nintendo's work from home infrastructure was not feasibly sound. This was something that took them a lot of effort to create something that allowed them to make progress smoothly. And as much as Nintendo wanted to come out and say, we didn't lose that much progress or time on our projects. That sounds, that was PR. Because if you come out and say, oh man, we, a lot of things got shuffled and delayed internally six months or 12 months, that sounds bad. And if you're an investor, you would definitely be shaken up by that. Yeah. You have to say, all is well, it's nothing to worry about. And I think that's what they were doing at the time. But the fact that Breath of the Wild 2, you introduced this game in 2019 at E3. It then was two years until we saw it again with a very short trailer. Mm -hmm. Not even a year later, nine months, eight months later, it's delayed. To me, that screams that you were hit significantly by internal delays caused by COVID. And I've seen some people wonder, did Nintendo announce the game too soon? Now, When you really take a minute to reflect on that, think about it. They announced the game in 2019. The world was normal. Everything was, you know, it was day-to-day routine. Nothing was happening yet. I don't believe this is a case where a company announced the game too early. It's just we had unforeseen circumstance put the earth on standstill. When do you think... It, and this is a hard question, but I want to ask you anyway. If if COVID didn't didn't happen, when do you think the game would have come out? It would have already been released by now, right? Yeah, I would have said would, the game would have came out in twenty twenty one. I would say I would agree with that. I would say twenty twenty one. I mean, it's it's really hard to gauge because with the title coming out in twenty twenty one, we would have to look at something like Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity. Mm-hmm. So now would that have come out a year earlier than it did? We don't know how that would have been placed. Right. Because when you look at titles like Skyward Sword HD, 
it's one of those filler titles where it would have been slotted wherever they had a gap. It wasn't an essential keystone release to their fiscal or calendar year. Age of Calamity, given the storyline and the narrative, definitely feels as though it was a title that they wanted out at least a year in advance of Breath of the Wild 2. So there's a lot of moving pieces here that we would really have to evaluate and gauge where we would then place them had COVID not happen. But I think Breath of the Wild 2 would have come out in 2021 and Age of Calamity would have been that 2020 release. And you would have seen that type of cycle come through had we not had a pandemic completely plague, yeah. you know, day-to-day life. Well, I mean, in Japan, as far as what I've been told and what I know, the infrastructure in, in many big companies was non-existent. There, there, was, there was really no work from home at all. So companies had to scramble to get, get all that set up, which meant literally in some cases months of, of downtime where nothing, mm-hmm. nothing substantial was being worked on. Right. And I think that's, that's the case of, of what happened with Breath of the Wild too. I, I don't see any any um any way around that. You know, it was very very uh, damaging to you know mm-hmm. uh, Asian countries it, where where there was no proper infrastructure in place, and many yes. many uh, big companies here suffered as well. So I think you know you really can't discount that fact. I think that's a very important point. But one thing that you said, Nate, you talked about filler games. Mm-hmm. Are we going to see Wind Waker HD? as a filler game this year? I would anticipate that we will finally see Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD get slotted in for release in the calendar year of 2022 because Nintendo has this tradition that every year has a Zelda release. And if Breath of the Wild 2 was the original intent, and now that that's been pushed, I really see no reason for them not to slot in Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD. And this was something we even talked about back in January, that if Breath of the Wild 2 was delayed, they have this as a backup plan. They can slot these in as that emergency summer release if they need them. Do they give us both? Is it a double pack? That was the original reporting going around last year, is that Nintendo was going to do a double pack. But maybe they looked at the sales of Skyward Sword and said, we might be able to net a few, you know, five, six yeah. million sales from these individually. So why don't we sell them for $60 a piece? My hope is a double pack, $60 for both games. I think that would be a nice value. And I think it would actually entice the consumer a little more because these are two games that just came out on the Wii U. I don't know if you can really ask people to go full price a second time around. Yeah. I mean, it could go either way. Like if, if they add, enhancements to either game where they feel like it could be worth um, $60 per game, then they probably will do that. But yeah, it seems like they'll offer it up as a double pack. But I guess if that's the case, then and I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this is going to happen. And I think, I think Breath of the Wild 2 <laughs> is a lock now, right? But what happens if the game gets pushed next year? You know, <laughs> what, what else do they have up their sleeve? Do they go... To the uh, Game Boy Advance stuff. I mean, what, what what do they give us then? At that point, it's uh, they're running out. They're running out of filler games now. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> they're they're running out. So they, well, they they need to put up or shut up at at some point here pretty soon. That's when you go even deeper into the Zelda <laughs> not, catalog. Not, not and you, of Gamelon. No, those <laughs> those stay locked away in their dungeon forever. <laughs> you go and you HD links crossbow training. Oh my god. Hey, it's not bad. It's, it's a good it's, game. It's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. <laughs> <laughs> you sound so pained. Uh, no. Yeah, it's like, not a good game. Yeah, that game. Well, I get you know they they have to uh, <laughs> they have to have something else if if uh, if they don't uh, give us Breath of the Wild two in spring next year. But I, I think I think. I think this is the last time that uh, this game gets pushed. You know, if it does get pushed any further, it'll be. Then small. I think it's just going to be like spring yeah. Yeah. to late summer, early fall of 2023. I don't think it's going to be another year long delay. I agree, because at that point, that's when I will really begin to wonder 
how far in development was this title when you announced it in 2019? And even with the COVID impacts, maybe you did announce it a little too early or we know that they're using like the same engine and a lot of people assumed you're using the same engine. You're building up off the same foundation of Breath of the Wild 1. That saves on development time because you have all these assets you can reuse. Yes, reusing assets isn't a bad thing. So all the people who looked at Elden Ring and Horizon Forbidden West and thought, oh my God, reused motions and assets, that's bad. No, it's an industry standard. A lot of people thought Breath of the Wild 2 would have been turned out a lot quicker than what we're seeing here. And maybe the game has just simply blossomed and expanded far beyond the original intent that Nintendo had visioned for it. Yeah. Or Nintendo had something that they were going for and they scrapped it. That also happens very often in game development. Absolutely. Yeah. And maybe one day we will get a retrospect on the development of Breath of the Wild 2. But it definitely makes you kind of marvel at what was done during the N64 generation oh, and yeah. how quickly Nintendo managed to develop Majora's Mask after Ocarina of Time was brought to market. I believe it was in the area of 18 months. Yeah, it was pretty quick from what I remember. I, I just had kind of come off uh, Ocarina of Time because I'd played the game to death and they announced uh, Majora's Mask. I was like, oh my God, like this is this is unprecedented almost, you know? Because and on the Super NES, you got Link to the Past and that's all you got, you know? Yeah. So that and was definitely a surprise. Like the funny thing with Majora's Mask development, it was actually a bet because Miyamoto wanted them to do another version of Ocarina of Time, which was basically something similar to Master Quest. And Anuma said, no, I want to make a new game. And Miyamoto said, you have pretty much like a year or 18 months to come up with a new game or you have to do Ocarina of Time Master Quest. Mm -hmm. And he made Majora's Mask. <laughs> so I was like, I want to show you Miyamoto. And we got this. Is that why the very... game has the time limit in the game? Now that's some meta. <laughs> <laughs> that's an interview question. <laughs> that, that is an interview question. All right. So let, let's, let's, uh, let's talk about this. Why doesn't this game have a title yet? Well, if we believe Nintendo's own language, it is because they don't want to give the secret of the gameplay loop or the focus of the game itself. So what you're saying is they they have a title, but they have not revealed it yet versus they don't they haven't thought of a title for the game. It appears that they do know the title and they simply will not share it due to spoiling the actual concept and premise of the of the game itself. Mm -hmm. So now, when, when do you anticipate we will learn more about the game? Then, because at some point they're going to have to show their hand and say, "Okay." Now, yes. we were initially thinking that would be a three. Do you think a three? Now we know when I say a three, I'm saying that that time frame over the summer. Obviously, e three mm -hmm. is no longer around, but there was, there should still be a Nintendo e three direct. I'll call it. Do you still think that right. we're going to see Legend of Zelda? Breath of the Wild 2 at that direct, or do you think they're basically telling us just hold off a little longer until we, you sh we show you what we have? See, this is one of those questions that I struggle with because when I think about it, if they, let's say they opt not to show it in a June direct and we see it again in a September direct, mm -hmm. is that three months? really that big of a factor from a consumer standpoint no it's really now not. from a development standpoint a lot of progress could have been made yes in those three months yeah so if i'm nintendo i would prefer to show you this game a little later in 2022 than to show you in just what two months time because mm -hmm. in two months time i could have announced the delay with a meaningful trailer i wanted to get this delay information out for two reasons my, the fiscal year was concluding, and as we saw, Nintendo stock actually dipped with this news, so investors definitely are not happy. And it allows them to bide their time. They don't need to rush to put together a trailer for a June Direct at this point. They can wait until September. 
they could wait till the game awards in December if they really wanted to, depending on the state of the game and what they want to show with the trailer. Because I would assume that the next time we see this game, we will have the official name yes. of Breath of the Wild 2, and we will have a release date attached. So right now, I'm thinking we don't see it again until the second half of 2022. I... 100 percent agree with you the only thing i will say is it may be even more than that when we see this game again it could be the game awards or it could be a february direct next year or an early direct next year i think you're right i think what what i got from anuma's uh you know delay video was Mm -hmm. we are still working on it here's a glimpse of what we can show you but we're not really going to be very active until we're ready to show you the game and give it a title and give it a a date. So that could be late this year. Um, it's probably not going to be early next year. Let's be honest. It's probably going to be towards the end of this year. I will say that that makes the most amount of sense. Yeah, to me. like I would expect that they're going to give it at least a six month marketing cycle. Right. From here's the official name. Here's a meaningful gameplay demonstration. And then six months later, we're probably going to get the release. And it kind of comes down to how is Nintendo using the terminology spring? Mm -hmm. Because some companies use spring as January through the end of March. And that's not meteorologically correct. But if it aligns with their fiscal year, where they view that as spring, and then winter is, you know, end of September to the end of December, It all comes down to that summer is, you know, June to August. It depends on how they're using that terminology because spring, as mentioned earlier, could be the end of March all the way to June. I think Nintendo is viewing spring as the entire month of March, not necessarily February. I think that would be in their winter time frame. So like my expectation is this game comes out in March of 2023. I can't see it being April or May. That would be a surprise if it was, I think, if it was April or May. I think, you know, when they say spring, the first thing that popped into my head was March. So mm-hmm. I, I think we should expect it around that time. Yes. May, May would be, I mean, May would, would put it out quite a lot more than I would have thought. So, yeah, I, I would not really expect it. Um, I mean, April possibly could be uh, the time, Mm -hmm. but I would say it's probably March when we'll see it. Yeah. I'm looking at March and that's where I could see them show us, show us the game meaningful in September. And you have that nice six month marketing cycle. Yeah. You show us a new trailer at the game awards to generate more hype. And then you have that first direct of 2022 in early February as that final launch trailer. And that's the last push right ahead of, you know, just ahead of the game actually coming out. Generate that last second buzz and excitement. And then boom, here's the game. Yeah. But I think for the next, you know, five to six months, I'm not expecting to hear much more about this game. Yeah. I, I don't think we'll, we'll hear about it at any. The the summer direct this year, we'll, we will not hear about Breath of the Wild 2. You know, I, I think yeah. this update will cover that. Until, Mm -hmm. like you said, the next update has to be the reveal of the game, the dates, the name of the game, more information about the game mechanics and the world, which I'm sure they'll they'll give it to us. But yeah, I wouldn't expect it for a while. Yeah, that's my expectation going in with this. And now, when you looked at the footage, there wasn't a lot of new footage in this delay clip. There was, you know, a few seconds. And a lot of people are focusing on the visuals. Some are looking for hints with, you know, icons, how the corrupted hand looks to resemble that of Ganondorf from the tomb. Also, how the character of Link being portrayed in the trailer looks very similar to the art depictions that we saw of the previous champions and how Ganondorf looked. So there's been a lot of analysis as to clues with the narrative. But I want to focus more on the visuals because this has been a point of contention with a lot of people as some believe that this footage is 
too good <laughs> for the switch I and every time we hear that <laughs> it's not true do well, you think this game looks too good um, for the switch this is a real tough one to to really answer for many reasons because we have to be very very clear this is a trailer and that yes. means that nintendo could have easily taken whatever was going on in the game and thrown it into after effects and added some spice to it i'm not saying that's what happened <laughs> but you know th th there's always there's always you know uh the possibility that, that, that it was touched up in some way uh the other option is it could just be more of a cgi cutscene that that they showed us you know mm -hmm. it's still running on in the game but it's it's not a i'll say a a true in engine but the other option is and i think you were alluding to it at the start nate in, is that is this game has been in development for a long time mm -hmm. it's it could easily be just in engine graphics because the engine has been updated you know the, the developers are a lot more comfortable with with this engine now than they were with the original engine for breath of the wild Mm -hmm. uh, as far as which one of those it could be, I don't really know. Like, I, I, I think it's, I think it is in engine, but I also feel like it's a, you know, it's a, it's a very well curated kind of cutscene, right, from the game itself, or, or a, a group right. of them that have been kind of spliced together. I don't believe it's using any type of. I was reading some articles about maybe it's using AMD FSR and upscaling and and all this stuff. No, it's not. It's not doing any of that stuff. Uh, I, I I didn't think that that really plays any part on on this game, but yeah, I think it's just a very well curated cut in engine thing that that they're showing us. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that's probably my best guess on that. I don't think it's it's you know running on any different hardware than 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 the Switch itself. But yeah, I mean, what do you think though? Like, uh, I, I definitely want to your thoughts on this i mean my initial reaction is as you alluded to this is a game that has been in development for the better part of likely four you know four years it is on an engine that nintendo is now more accustomed to we saw the engine previously used with ring fit adventure not a visual powerhouse of a game by any means but when you look at Breath of the Wild 1, I think something that people often overlook is that Breath of the Wild on the Switch was an unoptimized mm -hmm. version of Breath of the Wild from the Wii U. Yep. It, wasn't, it wasn't tuned for Switch hardware. It was basically just brute force of that code on Switch. And it didn't take advantage of the hardware in really any meaningful way. This is a game that's being built from the ground up with the Switch in mind. It's taking advantage of what the hardware has to offer, something that we didn't see with Breath of the Wild 1. And over those years that they've become more accustomed to this engine, they've learned tricks with it. What you normally see is you see these leaps in visual fidelity from the engine. And you can look to any company, look to Naughty Dog, go from Uncharted 1 to Uncharted 2, then Uncharted 2 to Uncharted 3. Huge leaps. And quality so why would you expect any different from nintendo and this type of engine and you can really go to any engine out there you can look at companies who started with unreal engine 3 back during the 360 generation look at gears of war 1 and then look at gears of war 3 it almost looks like a generational leap oh, in yeah. some regard oh yeah no doubt. And i think that's i think that's all we're seeing here is just a developer has become more comfortable and more skilled with the engine that they're using and as you mentioned it's also a very curated trailer we're not seeing the vast environments that the game is going to utilize everything is up close you know yeah everything's up close and as you mentioned i believe these are in engine for lack of a better word cutscenes. Yes. these are non-interactive movies they but it is in engine they could have easily just like Cold all the the polygons behind this scene, right? 
and just zoomed in on on this stuff and and filmed it in engine mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like yeah. it's really hard to know based on you know 15 seconds of this footage to really make a, a judgment call on what this is mm-hmm. uh the only thing i will say is this is not using fsr or any any upscaling technology at all i think you know because switch sports has uh, well, it, it is using FSR at least as far as we as far as we know it is at this time, based on you know data leaks and stuff like that. That doesn't translate to Breath of the Wild two using any type of FSR technology, because you know there is overhead for a game like Switch Ports. Bringing in FSR does make sense, but Breath of the Wild two, I can assure you, is probably maxing out all the CPU cores, all the GPU cores. There is zero overhead for for you know inclusion of fsr or any upscaling technologies unless it's in hardware and that's a different discussion for a different uh, piece of hardware that doesn't exist yet or maybe it does but we don't we, we haven't seen it yet <laughs> right and you know that's the thing is when you look at other games i'll use uncharted again as the example look at some of those in engine cinematics that we saw in trailers where you see those details and horrors and the hair on nathan drake but when you play the game nathan drake's character model never looked like that right but it was still in engine it yeah. was being rendered with the engine it just wasn't real time and maybe that's the key phrase to use here for terminology is that what we have seen from a lot of these scenes in breath of the wild 2 trailer is that it's not real time yeah it's an in engine cinematic so and it may not yeah. even be in the game. It, it it kind of remind me of the Hellblade trailer. You know, like mm-hmm. yes, it's running, it's running on the engine, mm-hmm. but it's it was kind of meant. It was built for this particular purpose, if that makes sense. So you're kind of you're kind of alluding to the original Breath of the Wild one trailer where we saw a Link run away from the yeah. Guardian, and that wasn't actually in the game. It was a marketing built trailer to right. emphasize some of the visual fidelity that they were targeting. I think so. I I, I think so. I, I I would be comfortable saying yes to that. I mean, that's kind of what I got from this was that okay. we're going to show you something here, but it's, you know, it, it's, it's really just a tease of, of what we got, the tech, mm-hmm. the game, um, how it's looking, the lighting, but it may or may not actually, this scene may or may not may be in the final game. It probably won't be, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it could be. And this would be one of those sequences where we will have comparison videos and see if the puddles are missing <laughs> and if the lighting has oh changed God. and if any details have been enhanced or if they have deteriorated. We will see all of those comparisons <laughs> when the game comes to market. <laughs> That's, what if, what if the what Master Sword do. is just a regular looking Master Sword when the game comes out? People are going to Nintendo lose has game. some. Nintendo has to answer for their crimes. <laughs> what happened? It's no longer. It's no longer corrupted Nintendo. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, when I looked at the trailer, there's really nothing there that screamed out to me. This isn't possible on the yeah. Switch currently in my dock. Yes, it looks good. It should look a lot better than Breath of the Wild did five years ago. If it didn't. I'd really be questioning what Nintendo was doing with this engine for five years because they should have tuned it and really found a lot more to do with it. And this is exactly what I would have anticipated from a game this deep into a console generation. You always see this type of advancement. So I don't know why you would expect any different from a Zelda game. Yeah, I agree. It is uh, It is very curious to see some some people talking about it feeling like this is not running on the switch or it's potentially a taste of the future uh i don't think nintendo would ever show their hand in that way when it when it comes to this stuff but, no, I, mean, um, we'll, I mean we we'll, saw the speculation at e3 where right. some looked at mario rabbits 2 yes and thought it looked too good for the original switch and all the footage that we saw of that game was on the current switch yep and it gives me a nice little segue, actually, happy coincidence, into some happy news. So we have the bad news that Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be delayed to 2023. But now, to counter that, I'm going to share with you that Mario Rabbids 2 
will in fact release in holiday 2022. Ooh, awesome. The game is going to make this holiday this fall. So there's something to look forward to. Awesome. I can't wait for that game to come out. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, I very love the Galaxy excited. theme. You notice how they just said, not going to acknowledge sunshine, going right to Galaxy. <laughs> Ubisoft knows what's up. I did talk to a few uh, friends at Ubisoft at GDC, and uh, while I didn't get uh, a, a, an idea of the date, Nate, uh, I didn't. I was told that the game was progressing well, so uh, I'm very, very excited to, for that game to come out because I loved the first game. It was awesome. It was a very good strategy game, and you know, as we mentioned back in January, I was I was hearing that the game was going to be second half of 2022 with that possibility of sliding into 2023. I am happy to hear that it is on track again to make it before the end of 2022, because this could definitely be a tentpole for Nintendo's holiday release lineup. It's Mario, it's Rabbids, yeah. it's quirky, it's galaxy themed. It's a lot of winning. Absolutely. Plus the movie. Yeah. With the Mario movie, if Nintendo doesn't have its own you know, answer with Mario, this is that type of game that they could then use the marketing of and without breath of the wild 2 there and as that holiday game this kind of frees up a title like rabbits to breathe a bit because you're not going to you're not competing with pokemon and zelda Mm -hmm. now you're just kind of competing with pokemon in terms of what has been officially announced and dated for 2022 we know nintendo still has to date the back half of their year beyond pokemon yep And, you know, come June, we will find out what is coming in the back half. Because right now we only have titles up to, I believe, June. I think that's all Nintendo detailed in the last Direct with Fire Emblem and Mario Strikers coming out in June. Splatoon 3 still has to be dated for summer. And we know Nintendo likes to release as many games as they can in the back half of the year. So still still a lot more to come. Still waiting for Metroid Prime 4. And yeah, I think that's a 2023 20, Bayonetta three. I mean, that should be something that we see in a June direct from Nintendo. I was being, I was kidding about Metro Prime Four. We'll probably see Metro, Metro Prime, Prime trilogy four. though, right? Metro Prime One at least. Yeah. Metro Prime Four, maybe 2023. We'll hear about that game <laughs> <laughs> one day. What's going to come out first, Silk Song or Metroid Prime Four? Go. Silk Song. Yeah, I'll, I'd say Silk Song. Silk Song could come out this year. That's my hope and expectation. We'll have to see. I mean, has to come out eventually, right? You would think so. Unless Sony has acquired Team Cherry and they sh- have hey, secured whoa. Silk Song. What, what, is this, what is this talk now? I don't know. It's April 1st. It sounds <laughs> oh, pretty funny to oh, me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was recorded on April 1st, though this will air <laughs> on April 4th. <laughs> yes. Sony isn't buying Team Cherry. I don't want to see that anywhere. <laughs> if they do, I didn't know about it, and it was just a joke that became reality. <laughs> oh, man. You put it into the universe, Nate. But wouldn't that be something? That would be something. Like, Sony buys Team Cherry. Silk Song is exclusive to PlayStation Plus. Oh, my God. It would be like, you're, wi- you're wishing for violence today. <laughs> I think it would just be kind of like it would anger so many people because we've been waiting so long for that. <laughs> could happen. <laughs> it could. And now we can go into some of the stream labs because we there are a lot. Them. Yes. And <laughs> I think that was a nice tight episode. We got to stretch our legs a bit, get back into marathon mode, future episodes, get our strength back. We're old. We are. and our first stream lab comes from dragon chi 26 who donated two dollars and 36 cents and writes could we see any quality of life improvements to mario kart 8 deluxe with the booster pass something along the lines of fixing the item rotation so coins are taken out additionally might we see more battle arenas as well where are block fort from n64 I will be the first to admit I actually have not played the Booster Pass Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC tracks yet. I will be the second to admit that. And as far as I know, Nintendo 
has not fixed any of the item rotation. And I mean, with the battle arenas, I would love to see Nintendo do something with that. But it seems as though they're pretty committed to just doing 48 tracks and not much more. Then had a dollar donation from Jackie G. The rights of Nintendo ever to theoretically bring a first party game of theirs to PC. What do you think would be the first game to make the jump? I'll go with Pokemon. Ice Climbers. Ice Climbers. A game that that has no relevance at all. So F-Zero? Could be. Could be (laughs) F-Zero. I would say Mock Rider. Game just seems like a PC game to me. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking like a meaningful game from Nintendo. um, Game Boy Tetris. How about that? Wow. That's not a bad one. I was thinking like a, I was thinking like Dr. Mario. One of like their puzzle oh, games. Oh, yeah. Dr. Mario would actually be pretty cool. Yeah. Something that they've already kind of dabbled yeah. with on the mobile sector. And then they would bring it to PC where it might find an audience. Mario run. Fun. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> What's, what was that game on the DS? Yoshi's Touch and Go? Yes. Now, yes. Yo- Yoshi's <laughs> Touch and Go. That's what I'm going to go with. Then, then they did the one with Pikachu. <laughs> it was the same basic game. Pokemon, what was it? Pikachu Run or Pokemon? Something like Pokemon that. Pokemon Dash. Yeah. Just terrible tech demos that they were charged $30 for. Oh, God. <laughs> And then had a $3 donation from Jared Helder. He writes, how often do studios pitch games that they have prototyped? How refined would the prototype need to be? I know Mercury Steam did this to work on Metroid, and IO Interactive did to work on James Bond. In my experience, because, uh, you know, we've I've worked, uh, well, I work for a company that, that pitches games um, and has games pitched to them. It's all about a vertical slice. I think that's really what you want to come, you know, it's not about building a prototype of the entire game. It's really about showing a a small small portion of the game, but enough to, you know, to to kind of pitch the game and sell it to a potential publisher, but also kind of get them excited about, you know, the, the possibilities of what this game can do because in some cases, I'm not saying this happens all the time, in some cases the publisher will step in and say, look, we really love what you have, but what would be really cool is if you did this. So usually it's it's more of a, a small piece of, of something larger, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And yeah, especially like indie studios or any contract studio, they'll often explore game ideas that they would like to pitch to, you know, bigger studios so they can get that contract work and stuff. So in the case of like Mercury Steam, it was them looking for work. Yeah. So they made that vertical slice of a Metroid concept. And as, in terms of like refinement, it's very skeletal. Like you wouldn't have a full render of Samus. Basically, you're just showing the concept of what you want to do with a game direction. And then it's for Nintendo to then look at it and say, we see what you're going with. We want to see you flesh it out a little more before we would give the green light and really put pen to paper so yeah. they're not super refined they're not heavily detailed a they're lot of the times rough. they're not even textured like uh there's there's yeah. one that I, i've actually seen i can't say the name of the game not because it's a game that's coming out or anything i just i, I can't really say based on um the person that's shown it to me sworn to secrecy but the game itself is is running in unreal but there's like it's there's no textures. It's just got that that generic like man, that Unreal man, you know, the the, the mm-hmm. non textured guy that runs around. So a lot of the times, it's really just showing you the gameplay mechanics itself, and it's not really showing you anything else because mm-hmm. you know they need they need funding for uh, you know to get uh, a VFX person, a te- you know a lighting person, a graphics person involved. So it's it's usually just a show us some gameplay and um, you know. Give it, write us a check. Hopefully, you like it, and then we'll we'll finish the game at that point. Mm-hmm. We then had a two dollar donation from Nexus, and this is a two part question. And they write part one of a two part question. Obviously, I can't see the information you received about the Fire Emblem game you said was missing from the direct. But isn't it possible that Three Hopes was the very same game? 
Koei Tecmo and Intelligence Systems collaborated on Fire Emblem Warriors Three Houses and Now Three Hopes, which could be described as mainline due to the story focus. Wouldn't you agree that a remake would make more sense after this, like releasing Skyward Sword after Age of Calamity? It was not the Three Hopes was not the Fire Emblem game I was referring to, and I know this due to the gameplay differences, character differences, and just with the Fire Emblem Warrior games, while Koei Tecmo does collaborate with Intelligent Systems, the Warrior games are developed by a different development team within Koei Tecmo. These are the Warrior games are made by Omega Force. The Fire Emblem game was made by a different in house studio. So. I can understand why you may think there may have been confusion there, but there wasn't. It's simply just a case of there's another Fire Emblem game in development. And that is what I had heard of. I did not hear of Three Hopes, but they are two different games. I then had a $3 donation from Baron. who writes, hello, Nate MVG. I love your work and your flow. Keep it up. I would like to ask, what is your opinion on the Xenoblade series? Best regards from Greece. I think we get asked this question every third or fourth episode. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I like the Xenoblade series, but I'm not a huge fan of it. Not because they're not amazing games. They are. It's, it's one of those time commitments that I just don't really have right now. And I haven't had for a while, but... um. I, I have played a couple of them and I, I really enjoy them. Says the guy who's put 120 hours in Elden hey, Ring. Hey, man, that game has its hooks in me. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm loving Elden Ring, loving it. I, I, don't, I don't need to play anything for a while. I, I'm happy to play Elden Ring for as long as until I explore everything and I have completely finished that game, I'm happy to keep playing it. Yeah, Xenoblade games, I, I enjoy. I love Xenoblade Chronicles 1. Two, I didn't love as much. I enjoyed the expansion of two. I think that was actually a better game than the main sequel. Xenoblade Chronicles X is also a fantastic game. I'm looking forward to Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and see how they connect one and two with the characters and see how they really conclude the trilogy. But yeah, I definitely enjoy the direction and the narrative that these games go. Then had a $5 donation from Inferno Fox 10. And they write, Nintendo is putting a lot of eggs in the basket for cloud gaming. Infrastructure comparisons for high-speed internet are a lot better in Japan to coincide with overall higher mobile gaming market. Any thoughts on Nintendo making a 4G adapter for the Switch? I mean, in theoretically... A 4G adapter in the Switch would be an interesting proposition. The issue would then turn into which mobile provider is allowing them onto their network, who would then want a percentage or a some sort of, you know, royalty or a fee, which we saw with the PlayStation Vita when it went 3G with AT&T. You had to subscribe and get a SIM card from AT&T and pay... I forget what it was monthly. Yeah. It might have been $10 a month to use the 3G service. So in concept, it's a neat idea. But I don't know if it's really practical, especially with how Nintendo likes to control the content and apps and stuff on their platform. So it seems as something, it may be something that actually goes against Nintendo's own philosophy. Yeah, short Unless, answer is no, yeah. it's not going to happen. <laughs> Unless Nintendo starts their own cell phone provider. Doubt it. Uh. <laughs> then had a dollar donation from Liam Warner. Who writes, possibly more of an MVG question, but if you take good care of it, what do you think of the lifespan of a new 3DS XL is? Also, is it possible to swap the battery out and can it be done with a third party one? I love 3DS and concerned about the eShop. Uh, you can swap out batteries on a 3DS. I don't know if I would recommend doing it, but if you are wanting to do it, I would suggest swap it out with an official battery, not a third-party battery. And I'm only saying that because 
Um, it's not exactly the same thing, but it's kind of related that I've tried that doing that on a PSP before, you know, the, the chunky batteries on the PSP. Um, my original one just expanded so much. It almost like blew the, the back case out. Right. Um, so I, (laughs) I, I swapped it out with a third party one that literally died within about a month. So then what I did was I bought an official one and then replaced with that and that that that's been working ever since so uh, look the 3ds is going to give you many many years before you need to replace a battery on it like it, probably 20 years to be honest with you i i have my my 3ds my launch 3ds that is still going strong there's there's no signs of any you know battery um running out anytime soon or that it holds its charge just as well as it used to. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it, but just in case, if you are thinking about it, I would probably just pick up a, a spare um, official battery and just kind of put it to the side just in case you need it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My PSP battery actually expanded so much. It did blow off the battery casing to the back of my PSP. Yep. Been there. Yeah. I didn't expect it. All of a sudden, I just saw it. I'm like, what the hell happened here? Quite shocking. And then we then had a $3.35 donation from Sherbert Picks. Right, hey, Nate and MVG. Thanks for always having a great show with informative and trustworthy content. Thank you. My question is, do you think we will ever see DuckTales Remastered come to Switch? It just seems like such a no-brainer and a license to print money. Thanks. Could happen. Could happen. I guess it would come down to whether or not WayForward still has the DuckTales license. I don't know if they still do, um, but that sounds like a game that I feel like could get uh, a, a, a game on the Switch. It seems like it's it's one of those games where we could see it. I would definitely double dip on that game. Absolutely. I have the Wii U a- version, so um, yes. you know, I'd, I'd like it on the Switch. Be very portable friendly. Yes. I have it on the 360. They're great games and they, you know, it deserves to come back. Yes. Because it was delisted and you can't find physicals anymore as well. So, yeah, I I would say bring it back. Let's do it. Let's go way forward. Get that license back. Then had a dollar donation from Artix. It writes between the Super Mario series and the mainline Zelda series, which series has pushed games as an art more? I would say Zelda. I would say Zelda as well. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I think that's a fair fair statement, right? Because if you think about the Mario games, obviously Mario sixty four kind of changed video games, mm. but Zelda kind of brings a unique aesthetic to the series. Every so often, it'll just completely change things up in a way that we didn't really expect it to. Um, mm-hmm. And it just, it's always so beloved though, when you go back and think about it, you know, I'm thinking obviously about like Wind Waker when, when we got the cell shaded Zelda, which at the time I remember wasn't universally praised. A lot of people were like, what is this? But yeah. I mean, come on, the game looks like an art book, you know, when you, when you play that game, it's absolutely gorgeous. And yes. obviously Breath of the Wild, the aesthetic of those games, uh, including Breath of the Wild 2, I, I would say, yeah, Zelda is definitely the is the pick there. Mm-hmm. That had a two dollar donation from Artix. It writes Nintendo fans should hope that the Steam Deck does well, so that it forces Nintendo to use its specs as the basis of their next gen Switch. However, the one and a half hours of battery for the Steam Deck is concerning. I don't think I mean, Nintendo is even. Do they, do they even know what the Steam Deck is? I don't even think no, they even know what it is. They don't. I mean, the Steam Deck definitely has some intriguing technical specs. Yeah. But what? But a lot of that is there because of the overhead of using Steam and Linux. Right. And it, it's a portable PC, whereas Nintendo makes a single device. It's a singular device committed to one thing and that's playing games yes so nintendo can come in with lower specs than what you see from the steam deck and possibly outperform it in some ways given the soc and what nintendo wants to focus on so 
I don't think Nintendo would has to look at the Steam Deck for direction of the future. Nintendo has a good vision. And when you have great partners like NVIDIA, you're going to be guided in the right way. Then had a $3 donation from Artix. He writes, since Nintendo keeps saying that we are in the middle of the Switch life, I would not be surprised if we got a Switch Pro this year. They want another four years of this Switch, and we did not expect Mario Kart 8 DLC five years after it launched. I mean, Nintendo does continue to claim that the Switch is only in its midlife, and they've done that for about three years now. So (laughs) the idea of Nintendo introducing a revision this year or early next year definitely makes a lot of sense to continue the Switch product line and keep it feeling fresh and renewed. So that is definitely something that I do anticipate will happen. Yep. And had a $4 donation from Artix. Right, Nintendo cannot launch a new console before 2024 at the earliest because their big game sequels are coming out in the next few years. The next 3D Mario, Breath of the Wild 2, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, etc. Those games take at least four years to develop and they don't want to have a Wii U drought. I mean, it is a good point. And it's definitely something that Nintendo seems to be aware of. And I don't see Nintendo launching a true next-gen successor prior to 2024. A revision? Yes. Next-gen successor? No. Then had a $5 donation from Artix. He writes, do you think Nintendo could partner with NVIDIA to use their streaming service or develop one themselves? I don't think that Game Pass is coming to Switch. Streaming is great in Japan. Nintendo has the money to create one with over $8 billion in the bank. Well, I will say that I agree that I don't think Game Pass is coming to the Switch either. But I also don't think Nintendo is interested in partnering with NVIDIA on a streaming um application for the switch i think the switch if anything we've learned from the switch is that it's all it does is play games you know the user interface has barely had any updates although we did get folders recently nate (laughs) very excited about that i think the 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 idea of the switch is just to launch into games and that's it and i'm not really feeling like they're interested in you know a streaming application i I think nintendo will explore streaming and cloud-based services you know more and more as the technology matures i think nintendo will just partner with companies that really specialize in that and nintendo themselves won't develop such a solution because i don't believe nintendo has the internal infrastructure to really develop a yeah good streaming base i mean we have had sony and microsoft invest millions and millions of dollars in years and the best thing we have on the market right now you would say is x cloud and that took microsoft a long time to achieve then had a dollar donation from aries plays writes how sure are you about metroid prime one remake i remember before e3 2021 a lot of insiders was talking about 2d metroid being a super remake And we get Dread instead. Is there a possibility that we're going to get a Prime Trilogy instead of a Prime 1 remake? So Metroid Prime 1 remaster is something I am very confident about. Now, the only uncertainty about it was that I had also heard that there were plans to bring Prime 2 and 3 to Switch. It's just a matter of would it be all at the same time or were they going to do them as standalone releases and that's something i don't have any clarity on so i'm operating under the idea that prime one remaster will come this year as part of the 20th anniversary of the original games release on the gamecube and two or three could come later if they are still to come because the original plan was that retro wants to do the trilogy but this was prior to them getting metroid prime 4 so their work on Metroid Prime 1 Remaster has been completed. And it's a question of has Nintendo shopped around the other two to some external studios to be remastered or maybe just HD them to the point where they feel comfortable bringing them to Switch, similar to what we have seen with like a Skyward Sword, 
type release that I do not know, but Metroid Prime 1, I am confident in. Then had a $3.69 donation from Skatittles, who writes, For over a decade, the Street Fighter games have had intri- intricate boob physics. After seeing the imprint of Ryu's massive dong <laughs> in the Street Fighter 6 trailer, <laughs> is it time we see the same love and... <laughs> Same love and care go into wiener physics, you know, for equality purposes. What do you, what do you think, Nate? You're the wiener guy. That's food. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, if, we, if we're going for equality, then I guess reuse elephant trunk has to flop and flail around in his loose fitting pants. That's fair. Is it? <laughs> we then had a $3.93 donation from Matt Anume. Who writes, John from Spawn Wave likes to remind us that the all digital future for games releases is coming. However, wouldn't that mean that dedicated console hardware itself would become redundant? Yes. Yes. And the old digital future is very likely at least one or two generations away. Don't let John scare you. Who? Exactly. (laughs) 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 That had a $10 donation from David. He writes, so I've got to ask, why do you think Soul Hackers 2 is skipping the switch? Keep up the good work. Love the show. Oh man, I think Soul Hackers 2 is, is skipping the Switch. Uh, I alluded to this um, on Twitter, but I think honestly, it's really because they don't see it as a good return on investment at this time. But that's not to say the game couldn't come out later, but I don't feel like it's going to come out later. I, there was some talk that maybe it will get announced, you know, in six months or something. But honestly, I think that, you know, they they took a look at the numbers. They said, this is going to cost us X number of million dollars to develop. And it's probably going to return this much money on in sales. And they looked at it and they said, we can't take this risk, you know. And so we, we have to just sit this one out. Yeah, we also don't know when the game started development. And, you know, there's so many factors that come into game development and a lot of Companies do do the focus groups. They have done analytical testing. And it could just be a case that the game will come to Switch a year later, six months later. Right now, it's really hard to decipher why Atlas opted to skip the Switch for this particular project. But, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it is a case of a late port. But that's something, you know, we'll learn a little yeah. later in the year. Absolutely. I mean, they could they could be giving it to another studio to to work or develop on it. It could be something that comes mm-hmm. later. But I just feel like, you know, this one feels like a a smaller budget, right? Where they, they just had to keep it within, in the confines of what they have. And they probably just took a look at everything and they said, this is not going to, this is not going to sell what we want it to, or this is what we think it's going to sell. And it's really not a good idea at this time to focus on a switch version, but that that could change. Yeah. We then had a hundred dollar donation from the Zelda sensei whom this episode is dedicated to who writes, Hey guys, I know there's a lot of talk about breath of the wild two sequels release date and whether it would make 2022 <laughs> after the Pokemon announcement, I no longer believe breath of the wild is coming this year. Breath of the wild development aside this year is now getting two stack. Well, you call it, you called it correct. It got delayed. It got delayed. <laughs> Hopefully nothing else gets delayed from Nintendo this year. Because all of a sudden that stacked year starts to look less stacked. Well, see, that's the thing, right? Like, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sidetrack us or anything. But like, there's, there's always that that hype about this is going to be the biggest year in the history of video games, right? Never is. It, and it never is because things always shift and move out. On, yep. I mean, it's still going to be a great year, you know, for video games this year, mm-hmm. but. It's never, it just, you know, yeah, whatever's kind of on the roadmap is 
is never going to be what the final result yeah. will be. And it's like every year you look for like, oh, this game got the like right now we'll say 2023. Like, oh, it's already looking awesome as Breath of the Wild 2. But then what ends up happening is one of those big releases always disappoints or it just wasn't as good as the hype made you believe it was going to be. Yeah. And that really detracts from like the hype that people were building up to it. And I'll use 2022 just as the example. You had Horizon come out, something that people were really hyped and looking forward to. Gran Turismo 7 even. And Gran Turismo 7 had the terrible launch. Microtransactions, poor rewarding system. Horizon was a good game in its own right. But it got completely outclassed by Elden Ring. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But had Elden Ring not lived up to its hype, yep. people wouldn't be saying 2022 has had a great year so far. People have been like, man, those three hyped games certainly didn't live up to the hype. I think Breath of the Wild 2 moving out of 2022 has already left a pretty big void in this year. You know, um, this year's you know, still, this year's still going to be a great year, but like, Things have already changed. You know, the, the, yeah. I think the narrative has already changed. Yeah, you feel you now feel like, that loss a little more. Now, now it's like we're already thinking about mm-hmm. next year, right? Exactly. Like we're following, we're in April. We're following these <laughs> releases, you know, because like next year could be next year could be Metroid Prime Four and Breath of the Wild Two. All of a sudden, that's like right. you know, that's I, like that's that's a one-two punch that you know you'll you'll yeah. never see in video games for another. Fi- 20 years so <laughs> i don't know man like i i i never really put too much stock into that because things always always get pushed out yeah the year is never the best year the, right the year is it's always going to be year. the next year yeah <laughs> that's true it is we then had a four dollar and 94 cent from matt Anume, who writes the ar-34 from perfect dark is the greatest sounding weapon in any video game ever and it's not even the strongest assault rifle in the game I mean, Perfect it Dark is. is a great game. I, I love it everything is. about that game. I always love getting the laptop gun, throwing it in a corner to guard my flank, throwing some proximity mines in front of me, and then having the Slayer rocket launcher oh, and yeah. going out in hunt mode. And I would just be taking the rocket through the corridors, hunting my prey. And I'm like, I'm safe on all the sides, so I know I'm not going to get flanked <laughs> and just shoot people. <laughs> Good times. But then the my laptop gun would be destroyed and I wouldn't know about <laughs> it and I would get destroyed. It was a fun game. I love that game. <laughs> then had a dollar thirty-four cent donation from Matt and Umay. Who writes, what is your favorite sound from a game? Another mention, sound of the Wolfen's G diffusers when Star Wolf intercepts in Star Fox 64. It's something that's missing in the 3DS version. There is a sound, but it isn't the same. I do like that sound that he was talking about. Hmm. I'm a big fan of the um, Link to the Past sword swiping sounds. They're, oh, they're always very, very pleasing to me. Yes. I think in recent times, beating a boss, that sound where the boss dies, that's always in Elden Ring. That's always fun. Oh, there's a, there's a music track in Elden Ring that was so cool when I heard it the first time. Have you fought the ancestral yes. spirit? That oh, music man. track in that battle yes. is awesome. <laughs> that, that, I know we're, we're, we're kind of diverting yeah. a little bit, but that, yeah, that, that music is, is oh, top man. tier. Top tier. I mean, some of the sound, like sounds from games that resonate with me, I mean, some of it comes from Goldeneye, like mm-hmm. the door opening. Even the, you know, the, the silence pistol where it goes, yeah, the, or yeah. when it hits the, the brick. Oh, uh, hits yep. the tiles. I mean, Bing. yeah. The, the, I mean, David Wise and, and Graham Norgate, those guys were absolute legends, are absolute legends. The stuff that they did on the N64 with those games were like absolutely yeah. works of art. This, man, sound effects in games. I mean, some of it's just underappreciated until you hear it just randomly and you know exactly what it's from. And then had a $3 donation from Tree Fingers. He writes, listening to the video discussion, or listening to the video discussing Bloomberg's article about devs possessing dev kits for the new Switch, you stated you heard this new hardware could come late 2022, early 2023. Has this changed based on number of new releases coming this year? As of this moment and recording, that has not changed. 
then had a follow-up donation of a dollar from Tree Fingers, who writes, based on your knowledge of the new hardware from Nintendo, would it be more akin to a PlayStation 4 Pro or a PlayStation 5? What makes a console a next-generation console instead of just a enhanced version of the original? In this case, I would say it would be more of a PlayStation 4 Pro than a PlayStation 5. A PlayStation 5 is was a true next-generational successor, whereas the Switch hardware I have been referring to is more of a revision. Mm-hmm. Think new 3DS from the base 3DS or even an Xbox One S to the Xbox One. As for what makes a new generation console, I mean, some people would debate this for hours. It really comes down to usually architecture. Yep. A bit with software. But typically architecture is the main thing, and that can become a little muddled in some cases because it's not the sole defining factor if sony wanted to they could have positioned a playstation 4 pro as a next generation system to the playstation microsoft could have done the same with the xbox one x there was definitely enough of a power leap for them to do so but they opted to go with a revision because it stayed true to the same operating system and such as the playstation 4 or xbox one it really comes down to marketing and branding and positioning by the console manufacturer, whether or not something is a next generation system. I have made reference to Nintendo's own definition in an interview with Iwata, where they called the Game Boy Color a successor to the Game Boy. Oh, not this again. And MVG and <laughs> Jeff Grubb and others will argue that it was a revision to the Game Boy. And they're not wrong. And you could also view that the labeling in the interview and the Iwata ask that as a successor to the Game Boy may not be wrong either. It It's really a matter of semantics in some cases, and it's probably one of those things that gamers need not get that yeah. invested in. I agree. I mean, it's like the generations discussion, you know. Yes. Who cares if it's generation seven or eight? <laughs> you play it. Also, the Game Boy Color is not a generation <laughs> higher than the Game Boy. It's a revision. Game Boy advances a generation. I'm just going based on the interview's official wording. (laughs) But you're right. Yeah, the Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance was a new generation. DS was a new generation. And this we had a dollar donation from Cypress FX. All right, hey guys, two short questions if you don't mind. One, when can we expect a release of Mario Party 2, 1 and 3 2 on NSO? Oh, um, it's a good question. I mean, you'd think it's probably in the list, right? That that it would come for the NSO. I haven't really given it too much thought. Like, it's interesting now because we're kind of in uncharted territory with the NSO N64 releases. We just got Majora's Mask and, and obviously F-Zero. Now mm-hmm. it's like, well, what are we getting next? So we can speculate. Um, but yeah, I, I would say that Mario Party is on the list. I don't know when when we'll see it, but hopefully we will this year. That'd be a cool, cool announcement. Yeah, they're actually almost done with the original announced and shown NSO and 64 lineup. So that means we're due for them to give us a more detailed roadmap in the near future. Maybe at a June Direct, they'll give us a little more information on the future of N64 and NSO because they have been consistently doing one game a month. Then had a five dollar donation from Jose. Right, love, love podcast like always, boys. Keep up the good work. I'm glad paid attention when I did to you too about the Wii U games. Was able to complete the North American set. Still suck. The eShop is getting shut down. Congratulations on completing your set. I know that there is some pretty sought after Wii U games right now. So well done. That's true. I've seen Devil's Third keeps going up in price. I got to be honest, I, I sold my copy about a month ago. What? My sealed copy. I got, what? A, got a pretty penny for it too, but I kind of wished I'd held onto it a little longer. But, <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I never played that game. So I'm happy to <laughs> happy to hand it off to someone that will cherish yeah, it more I, than me. 
God, that game. What a disaster that story was around that game. We then had a $5 donation from Del Rache. Who writes, you enter a fast food sandwich shop. Subway, Firehouse, Jimmy John's, etc. What are you ordering? Uh, for me, it's either something with, with roast beef or turkey. That's kind hmm. of my, my usual type of thing. So I'm getting like a... If I'm going to Subway, I'm getting like a, a roast beef with lettuce and pickles and uh, yellow peppers mm. and some oregano, that kind of thing. Maybe some, um, maybe some tomato. Yeah, I guess if I'm going into like a Subway, I'd get get turkey, cucumber, spinach, lettuce, probably provolone cheese. Mm-hmm. Maybe a dressing, depending on my mood for the day. If I'm going to like an Italian deli, I'd get some, do turkey, maybe roast beef, some good, nice, it depends how the kabagul looks. I'd have to look at the kabagul. Maybe salami if the kabagul is looking a little rough. Hmm. Yeah, it depends the shop I'm walking into and the day and the weather. Yep. Then had a five dollar donation from Lexany. All right, hey Nate and MVG, I really like your discussions. Keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you. you. you My question would be: As the Nintendo Switch turns five, how satisfied are you guys with the console and its software output? Where do you see opportunities for improvement? Well, we finally got folders. <laughs> We did. I think um, <laughs> I'm very satisfied with the switch and its output. I think anyone, every you know, most people would say yes. It's it's met and most likely exceeded expectations. Um, as far as what it needs, I mean, not much. I mean, obviously the hardware is is showing its age now. It's starting to show its age, and we've already talked about a revision. And I think that's really what the the solution there will be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, otherwise, I'd say probably some of the social applications. I would love to be able to send messages to friends, uh, more simplified invite system and joining system, better native networking. voice chat, better networking. So mostly, I'd say on the online infrastructure standpoint is where they could really stand to improve things. Then had a ten dollar donation from Shamas. Right, hi Nate. Do you think Nintendo's historically up and down success, like the Wii U? has them hesitant to move on from the Switch. Do you think Switch will become their default gaming platform, much like Sony has PlayStation and Microsoft Xbox? I think for the next few years, the Switch family will be Nintendo's primary platform, and that's why you would see a revision be introduced, be it this year or early next year. And then in the next few years is when we would see a new next generational concept from nintendo that would deviate from the switch line i don't think the wii u necessarily has nintendo hesitant to move on from the switch i just think they look at the platform and they're finding a lot of success and sales haven't slowed down so they're really not in any rush to move on from it but they will in time because nintendo likes to innovate they like to create new ideas and concepts and i believe once they come up with that new concept that's when we will see a next generational successor maybe that's introduced in 2025 or you know around that time frame but for the time being i think switch as a platform and a family of devices will remain their focus until that time comes then had a five dollar donation from dark b andy right when it comes to netcode how many devs does it take to make a proper online to make a proper online for a fighting game. Back when Street Fighter V was PlayStation timed exclusive in 2016, Capcom only had one employee to do the entire netcode. Is that true? I'm not sure. I'd have to check. We, yeah, we need to check that. Um, it's it's very hard to answer that question. You know, like it, it it's it's very difficult to answer that question because let's say they did have one one developer on it. It it it, it it's i guess the interpretation there is is that it's like they're not really they're kind of treating it as like an afterthought maybe 
Um, but what if that one developer is a rock star, you know, um, that really knows netcode very, very well, right? So I don't know. I it's 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 difficult to kind of to to respond to that, you know, because there's just so much that we don't really know about the, the situation that happened at the time. So it looks like individuals on LinkedIn found one employee mm -hmm. who was designated to do the net code. Right. And Capcom, yeah, they, according to their LinkedIn, they said one man operation until the game was launched. Interesting. So they were the design, architect, program, huh. and operator of Capcom's fighter network for Street Fighter V. I mean, so I guess to answer the original question, how many how many devs would it take? I mean, you'd want at least a team, right? Like at least three or four, yeah. maybe. Um, I would say. But again, it's yeah. it's very hard to kind of you know quantify that in in, in any meaningful way. Like at, at Night Dive, we have one networking guy, but he's really really good at what he does, and that's the only thing he works on. And he was responsible for getting netcode up and running, crossplay, you know, on Quake and and Turok two, and you know, so it's very hard to say just one per, you know, if it's just one person, then it's it's kind of like not really giving mm. the attention it deserves. But it, it also is surprising that it is Street Fighter, a game that obviously lives or dies by its netcode, that there is only one person working on it. So yeah. I, I'd probably say, yeah, that that is definitely surprising, and maybe they should should have had at least a team of a couple of them on on it. You would think, yeah, you'd you'd think, yeah. Shame on you, Capcom. Then had a four dollar and two cent donation from Houster thirty four. All right, hi Nate and MVG. First of all, I want to say I love the podcast. Listen every week in Scotland. Thank you. Thank you. Question for you guys. Do you think Gran Turismo 7 will come to PC? And if so, when? I do. Yes. I would say it would probably be maybe a year to 18 months. Yeah, I think the the message is loud and clear that, that Sony will bring as much as it can to the PC, especially now that God of War is is out. Mm -hmm. I think anything is is on the table for a PC release. And I, I would I would say that Gran Turismo 7 would come to the PC at some point, probably in a year. Yeah. Then had a $7 donation from May, right? Hello, Nate. Is Nintendo still planning on releasing Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games for Switch Online? If so, what would be the best guess as to when these might appear? Thanks for your regular podcast and all the information you provide. I never heard about Game Boy Advance coming to Switch Online. I only heard of Game Boy and Game Boy Color, and to my understanding, the work on those emulators and such for NSO are complete. It's just a matter of when does Nintendo want to introduce them to the service? My best guess as to when these could appear, maybe this summer, if Nintendo still has intent to bring them to the service, when I would did, imagine they would. When did NSO for N64 get announced? That was announced in September and launched in November. I'm going to say the same thing again this year for Game Boy and Game Boy Color. You're right. Game Boy Advance is not anything that, that will probably happen. I think Game Boy Advance is not a part of their plans. Yeah, I could, it's tough to say. I mean, it's really a matter of when Nintendo wants to do it. As I said, the work is done. At this point, the work was completed over a year ago. Mm -hmm. So it's really a case of when does Nintendo want to introduce it? Maybe it's something they announce at a June Direct, but it's all up to Nintendo at this point. It is in their hands. Then had a dollar donation from Chris B. He writes with the NVN2 leak. Do you believe that there could be a launch similar to the OG Switch launch, where Breath of the Wild Two gets the or Breath of the Wild gets the lead, and this new Switch launches with it? Also, have you heard anything about the recent Xbox Keystone leak? Maybe a streaming stick. Thanks. I think we already covered some of that with Breath of the Wild Two. That yeah, you know, it, its delay is not um, correlating to new hardware in any shape, but it could also be 
very, very, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but, you know, very <laughs> coincidental that it, that it, right. it might. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like listen to, you know, our takes for, I guess, our thoughts on that. But I don't think the game, again, I don't think the game was delayed for specifically for, for a new revision of hardware or anything. Right. Yeah, if it happens, it's just a happy coincidence and timing. As for the Xbox Keystone link, as far as I've heard, it is very likely a streaming stick or some sort of streaming solution. So I'd be very curious if Microsoft brings this to market or not. Yeah, I don't even know what it is, but it's not it's not a new <laughs> X, it's not new Xbox hardware or anything ridiculous like that. Right. Yeah, the expectation is just a streaming stick, basically, like a Chrome stick mm-hmm. thing. Then had a seventy-five dollar donation from that designer guy streams. Who writes much respect to what you said on Spawncast about Joanne and the Wizard game. Just wanted to show my support. Thank you. Then had a dollar donation from Liam Warner, who writes, Have you heard anything about the supposed 2D anniversary collection Samus Hunter keeps teasing on Twitter? Who? <laughs> Regardless if you have or haven't, do you think it would be limited like 3D All-Stars because the 25th anniversary collection on Wii wasn't? I have not heard anything about a 2D anniversary collection of Kirby... Would I be surprised if we saw something like that happen this year? No. Do I think it would be a limited release like 3D All-Stars? Yes. Nintendo has proven that that business model is very successful for them with 3D All-Stars and with the Fire Emblem anniversary release. So I would anticipate that they would continue to do the same. Then had a $10 donation from Anthony who writes, Cool. Do you think Nintendo will bring 64 DD games expansions to NSO, especially the F Zero expansion pass? No. Unfortunately, I agree with MVG here. I do not. I feel as though if it were something that they had intent to do, we would have seen it with F Zero X being brought to NSO. We would have seen the DD expansion and stuff. It would have been a great opportunity for Nintendo to really create extra value with these releases and to give fans new content to explore. But I don't see Nintendo exploring 64 DD on NSO anytime soon. And that is the conclusion to this episode's Streamlabs marathon. (laughs) We did it, Nate. We did. It took an hour. Uh, uh, No, it was... 46 minutes wow. to do the Streamlabs questions this well, episode. We apologize for the delay. <laughs> we will uh, we will uh, have more episodes in a more timely fashion moving forward. But uh, everyone everyone that, that uh, submitted their questions, thank you and uh, for your continued support. Yes. yes, thank you to everyone who donated and supports the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have the Streamlabs link in the description below. Donate any dollar amount, ask a question. We will answer it at the end of the episode, donate $100 or more, and we will dedicate the episode to you. And this episode was dedicated to the Zelda Sensei and Shamsa. And I'd like to thank my co-host MVG for joining me as always. Always a pleasure, Nate. Thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, great to be back. Yes, it is. And If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to give the video a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below on the Zelda delay, whether or not you think Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD will come to Switch this calendar year, what you thought of the trailer, and how you feel about Mario Rabbids 2 coming out in holiday 2022. And until next time, continue to embrace the hate.